York County, in the central southwestern portion of New Brunswick, is home to the capital, the city of Fredericton. Around 60,000 people live in Fredericton, which is divided by the St. John River. With one tap room per 5,400 people, Fredericton is quickly becoming a major hub for beer lovers. Trailway Brewing is named for its location on the north side next to Fredericton's extensive trail system that runs throughout the city and along both sides of the St. John River. Today we're at Trailway Brewing on the north side of Fredericton and we're going to be speaking with Jake and Dan, the co-owners. We've been following their journey since their humble beginnings brewing in Jake's basement to how they've grown now to have their own tap room, which we're lucky enough to live right next to so it's a common hangout spot for us. My name uh, is Jake Saunders. I'm one of the co-owners here at Trailway Brewing Company. So the brewery started back in 2014 when Dan and I, we were both active members in the New Brunswick Craft Brewers Association. We were at a beer club meeting and we both shared a common goal of maybe one day opening a brewery. We were both working full-time jobs at that time. We had a, maybe a few too many beers and we got in discussions about starting a, a brewery out of my basement. And uh, within a couple weeks of that, we were buying equipment and the rest is history. We expected to at least go a couple years out of my basement. I would say probably within the first six months we were decided, uh, we were, to be honest, we were burning out. So we were both working full time and then working 20 plus hours a week in my basement. So we, we knew that you know we could only sustain that for so long. So probably within six or eight months, we kind of put the plans into motion to, to move. We didn't have a location chosen at that point, but we, we started to work on a business plan. Within a, bit, a little over a year, we had committed to real estate here on Main Street. So we opened this location, start of June 2016. The name is, uh, I guess, a bit of an ode to Fredericton's great city trail system. So the house that we were brewing out of was located on a really beautiful stretch of one of Fredericton's paved walking trails. So we, we had a real hard time thinking up a name, but uh, it, was, it was nice that we had that walking trail right there. I used it, I was commuting most days to work. And then on top of that too, once we found this location at 280 Main Street, it was very convenient that the name kind of, it kind of worked because we're sandwiched right between two walking trails here on Main Street. My name is Dan Mason and I'm co-owner and co-founder of Trailway. I guess from the start, we've been really chasing after high, high aroma, high flavor. We're known for, um, I guess, the, the appearance, uh, the hazy kind of style. It's kind of always been a, a byproduct of the uh, flavor and aroma and body uh, mouthfeel that we've been chasing after. Our grain bills are, are uh, quite high in protein, um, so that's using uh, flaked wheat, f flaked products, so flaked wheat, flaked oats, a um, lot of those, but uh, mostly it's, it's really due to high hop loads, high, high dry hop rates, a uh, lot of hops in the, in the whirlpool. When we started uh, back in 2014, uh, we, we, part of the reason we started the brewery because there was that huge gap uh, in, in New Brunswick. Nobody was kind of doing the, the hazy, low IBU IPAs quite the way they were down in, uh, say, Portland, Maine. So we were, we were, at the time, we were huge fans of uh, Bissell Brothers and some of the other kind of New England breweries that were doing the really fruity, hardly any bitterness IPAs. We'd make a trip every couple months, you'd stock up, stay over for 48 hours and, and bring it back. So we, we did that pretty regularly and it was the main style of beer that we were brewing when we were home brewing. So we, we recognized that there was that gap there. So we were selling to some of the bigger bars in the, in the city at the time and, and the feedback we were getting was really good. They were selling out. We were on the taps with many of the big players and they were saying, you know, we had the bartenders and the owners of restaurants telling us that we were out selling them. So that was a pretty good indicator to us. To this day, like we, we have evolved a lot as a brewery, there's, there's no question. Like if you look at, at our tap list right now, you know, we have a couple different loggers on tap, which is something that a couple years ago we never thought we'd be doing. We're doing uh, we're doing fruited sours. We're doing we, we we do a pretty wide spectrum of, of beers. I like to think that we do them all all well, but our bread and butter since day one has always been those those hazy IPAs. It's, that's the one that people kind of know us for. That's the reputation that we have in here. From day one, uh, even in the basement when uh, when we first started, uh, our first recipe I guess that we really committed to was was an IPA, and, and we ended up calling it Hugh John. 
um, from the start, it, it was our best seller and it continues to be by a factor of four or five probably. It's, it's quite, quite a ways out front. <laughs> Especially when we started, I think there was really nothing, there was no products quite like it on, on the market. And uh, you, you had to kind of travel out of, out of the province to get something like it, whether it was Quebec or maybe Nova Scotia, mostly obviously south. So I think it was, uh, it was certainly an introduction for people. And, and, uh, and that's kind of what we aimed to do. We, you know, the, that's why we started Trailway, because we were home brewing these types of beer and, and uh, really happy with them, so we wanted to share them. The story behind the Drome is uh, back in 2015, 2016, when we began looking for commercial real estate to move our brewery. We actually, I actually knew the owner of that building, and he was, I think at the time, maybe 83, 84 years old, looking to sell it, looking to retire. So we weren't actually looking at it as a bowling alley, we were just looking at it as a shell of a building that you could put a brewery in. After we thought about it, we, it wasn't really the appropriate building for us. We were better suited for a leasing agreement, hence why we landed in here. Fast forward four years later, the old fellow, he listed it, and uh, we, you know, it, was on, it was on the market, and I kind of jokingly said to Dan, we should, we should buy that and turn it into a bowling bar. And he kind of laughed, and I think within a day or two, it was just, we were in discussions uh, about seriously buying it because we saw the potential of uh, this, this place that could be a fun bowling alley. So we bought it in September of 2018 and haven't looked back. Uh, we did a full renovation, so we shut down about five months and we've since reopened and it's thriving, it's doing great. Candle pin bowling, it's 10 pin bowling, smaller ball than your typical large kind of bowling balls. It's the only bowling I've ever known around here. Uh, it's very regional, so candle pin is only played, I think, in the maritime provinces plus in New England. So really beyond that, there's not, there's not r much of a market for candle pin bowling, but it is a unique game. It's a lighter bowling ball, so it is friendlier to the kind of the senior population where they're not having to carry one of those large kind of uh, bowling balls. So since we bought it, we've, we've started four new bowling leagues, Monday through Thursday. All, all of them are full with 48 bowlers plus friends and spares and all that. So we're, it's kind of, we're introducing Candlepin Bowling to a whole new generation. Uh, we've branded them as the Beer Leagues. Team Trailway, we bowl on Thursday nights in there. We have a phenomenal time. We have a, a lot of fun in there. So we're, we're really enjoying our purchase. <laughs> Beer is, is interesting because you get so many different people have so many different opinions on beer. We have some people that hate us, some people that love us, right? So the reality is there's so much selection right now in the liquor stores. The beer industry in New Brunswick has evolved so rapidly just in the last four years since we've been at this location. Uh, the way people's tastes have kind of swung to loving our beer, and now you got so many people that are really demanding the sours, which you know only a couple years back people sat, nobody was doing sours. Now it seems like everybody's doing sours, right? So that's the exciting part of beer that that it's always evolving, it's always changing. You know we're trying to keep up on that. It's always a challenge to know you know what's the next step. We currently have a barrel aging program in the back. That's where the market's going. Whether it's uh, wine, barrel-aged sours, like we, we, we're building up our pipeline, we, we got a cool ship, so we're doing a lot of different uh, spontaneously fermented beers that are all aging in, uh, in kegs, and, and you know, we're talking three, four year projects, so it, it, it always is a challenge trying to stay up on kind of what's, what's next. It was great to catch up with Jake and Dan today, and of course, to try one of their famous hazy New England IPAs. Like I said earlier, we live right next to Trailway, so it's really cool for us to get more of an in-depth look at what they're doing. And we're always super pumped to see what they've got in store for the future. Cheers. Cheers.